about what the Attorney General was doing meeting with the chairman of the Fox uh, Corporation. Well, and again, and I'm going to come back to Sandy in a second, but I wanted to just stay with you for one minute on the, on, the, on the reporting part, on that very point, because as you yeah. said, the purpose of Fox News for the next at least, you know, four or five, six months, in theory, will be to defend Donald Trump against impeachment. And yeah. you've now seen the exit of the guy who most frequently booked probably the most vociferous critic of Donald Trump, but not even critic, somebody who laid out and explained the legal jeopardy and the exactly. impeachment jeopardy that Donald Trump is in the most uh, sort of, you know, eloquently, which is Judge Napolitano, who is yeah. e even more so than Chef Smith, somebody who has explained in very plain language why what Donald Trump has done is either legally problematic or, uh, or, or going to lead to impeachment. With Chef not there, his bookings, I, I presume, are, get reduced in number. Uh, without question. I mean, clearly, um, he will have to now rely on his relationships with other anchors and producers to get uh, airtime. And I think that will, it's a great point you raised, Joy. It will be interesting over the next, and important to track over the next days and weeks, uh, how many appearances Judge Napolitano uh, will be getting on the network. Or if he lasts. Right. And yes. I think if you just, uh, if we pull back for a second and just look at the danger in journalism, because when Fox first started, how they started attracting so many viewers, on 9-11, they were one of the few networks to actually show people <coughs> coming out of uh, the buildings. And it wasn't <coughs> journalism, it was uh, to sensationalize. So it, even in its heyday, it was yellow journalism at best and partisan trash state TV at its worst as time went on. So when you think about that, Who's going to replace you? Because you do have to find a way to penetrate that layer of woeful ignorance that these Trump sycophants have. He was the one voice at that network who could do that. And so this, with his absence, it continues this dumbing down of the American electorate. And this isn't really a partisan issue because I do think there are people on both sides of the divide who just pay no attention to what happens right. in politics, even though it uh, definitely impacts their life. And so you do wonder, and Fox, look, they dominate their time slot typically. Chef, he still dominated his time slot, but was, was one of the lower rates hours yeah. and when you ask people how they get news I mean cable news has left newspapers in the dust and I don't say that in a carnivorous way I wish more people um, have the context of what print reporters do when they have so many people opining on what's happening in politics and without that I do think um, that it just leads to, to less intellectually curious people um, casting ballots and having an opinion on what's happening uh, with our country. And you see that at the town halls with these congressmen defending their stance on impeachment. A lot of them are getting their information, unfortunately, from Fox News. You yeah. saw the woman who said, I didn't know the Mueller report said anything bad. Right. That's a disservice to us as an American people and very consistent with how dictators uh, come to power. By the way, you can't trust the news, you can only trust me. Exactly. And have they stay in power. Because right. Eric, you know, you know, t t you know, and I think that Tiffany was absolutely right that, you know, it's unfortunate that more people don't have time to take in the sort of fuller content you can get from print, but we're also this week, you know, had, had Chef not resigned, the other thing we were going to talk about, the one of the reasons we invited you, is that the New York Times is now being criticized again for, in a sense, repeating the exact same scenario that got us where we were in 2016 by once again publishing Peter Schweitzer from this pretend uh, organization that's supposedly looking out for government corruption, but who, po who posits whole conspiracy theories including him being one of the main um, person who has pushed this conspiracy theory about Russia not really attacking our election, that it really being Ukraine who hid the Democratic service because the Democrats attacked themselves. I mean, you have print media right. who are also seeming to, I don't know if it's a sense of fear of really challenging a president who's becoming more autocratic, but if you have that happening at the Times, and then you have Fox losing really one of only two anchors who ever right. challenged the president. Chris Wallace. That was the only one, one guy left. All you got now is Chris Wallace, and he occasionally challenges the president. How does that then impact right. us as we go into an impeachment of somebody who is displaying very clear autocratic tendencies? Yeah, I mean, if we've got a, such an important institution like the New York Times not learning any lessons from 2016, I mean, Peter Schweitzer uh, wrote this basically fictitious hit book on Hillary Clinton, the New York Times, you know, marketed that thing like it was the most important book of the campaign. Every other news organization pointed out that book was riddled with errors. The New York Times had an exclusive with that book and somehow forgot to ever tell its readers the book was riddled with errors. And, um, and, and now here we are in 2019, and lo and behold, you open the New York Times, and there's Peter Schwartzer writing this op-ed about everything the, the Biden family did wrong, doing it in the name uh, of corruption. You had, he wrote an entire column about allegedly families cashing in on their politicians, uh, their, their, their families' uh, political roots. The word Trump is never mentioned.